Good morning, Los Angeles. Good morning, Southern California. And good morning to people of diversity, people of color, uh, people of goodwill, people of good intention, and people who want to, to know the truth and understand how best to get to it. Please stand warmly and welcome our senator, Diane Feinstein, senator from the great state of California. Talk as we might, work as we might, put together legislation as we might, we will not have the votes for it unless we work across the aisle or unless we bring about a new democratic majority. I am here today. I'm here today to ask you to bring about that new democratic majority. Many worry that under Jeff Sessions, that the progress that was made with Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch, that that progress will be lost. How do we, as a community, ensure that the issues of police brutality that we watch be played out in the media and the news don't continue to plague African American, Latino, and communities of color? Well, for starters, I agreed with everything you've said. And the history and the work of Jeff Sessions um, led me, as the lead Democrat on the Judiciary Committee, to speak against his nomination, to vote against his nomination, and to lead every Democrat on that committee to vote against his nomination. Again, we don't have the votes, so he was eventually approved by the full Senate. I think what every one of us has to do is watch and watch very carefully. Point out what we don't like, get to our representatives with that, and we expect him to be the Attorney General separate from the presidency. We don't think this is the president's lawyer. He is not the president's lawyer. He is the people's lawyer. So the people are going to have to help us watch and be prepared to make statements and rise up and support those of us that try to take a positive response in the Senate of the United States. So be there with us. Let's watch carefully. Let's speak out when we can. And let's make that public opinion count. All right. So the gentleman to my left in the green shirt, you have the first question for the Senate. Uh, my question is, will you co-sponsor Senator Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill? Not why? Not at this stage, and I will tell you why. I I will tell you why. Essentially, as I understand what Bernie is proposing, it is a takeover of all medicine in in the United States, and I don't favor that. What I favor is taking a couple of problems in the Obama bill and working those out. And this has to do with the individual uh, market, which is highly problematic. Well, okay, I've got I, to understand, I understand if you want to stay after this. Can you reassure your constituents that your decision or your belief in a robust role in the uh, Syrian conflict is not influenced by special interests. Thank well, you. I'll tell you what does influence me. I'll, I'll tell you what does influence me. The length of this war, the fact that a half a million people have been killed by a brutal dictator who does not belong to serve his people and should be ousted from office. I deeply believe that. You cannot let children you cannot let children, the president, you're, I'm telling you how I see it. We're not going to hear the senator, we're not going to hear 
the senator. We're not going to hear the senator if everyone is shouting. We owe it to her. We invited her here to hear her answers. We don't have to agree with all of them, but we need to hear them. I see the interference of Russia in our election as being a, a frightening threat to our democracy and the continuance of our country as we know it and seeing what the result was that we now have Trump as our president. I want to know... I want to know what you're doing or what you can do and what we can do to see that an independent commission is appointed to investigate the collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Thank you. Uh, did you hear that, Senator? Uh, I have supported the push for an independent commission. No question about it. In the meantime, because the votes are not there to do it, the Senate Intelligence Committee is proceeding with an investigation. I have no doubt that Russia made an attempt to influence the election to defeat Hillary Clinton and thereby elect Donald Trump. Uh, my question is, what measures are you taking to ensure that undocumented parents here in California can stay with their children? Great question, Kim. Two things. I recently met with General Kelly, who's head of Homeland Security, and indicated to him my profound disagreement with any separation of families and children. I got the idea that he understood. I do not believe that either party is going to allow children and their families to be separated. With respect to the dreamers, with respect to the dreamers, there are about 730,000 dreamers, a third of whom are in California. And my staff and I monitor this virtually daily to see that they are protected. Hi, I was wondering um, how you felt about term limits. A lot of senators and Congress people that are in office that we have uh, opposition with are in office for like Mitch McConnell, for example. Um, how do you feel about term limits? Oh, I'd have no problem with it if you can do it. I don't believe you can. All right, thank you. Any, to your right, Senator. My concern is, as you yourself pointed out, we do not have the votes to get that. We do not have the votes in the House, we do not have the votes in the Senate, and this administration has proven that they will blatantly lie to the American people, and as Jeff Sessions has proven, there is no consequence for it. So my question to you is, this is increasingly start to seem to us like a bloodless coup. And there is nothing we can do about it if we don't have the votes and if people continue to lie. So my question is, the entire Republican Party is participating in this right now. They're all tainted by it. What is our remedy for an illegitimate president? That, that's a big, uh, that's a big, um, I know the terrible things that happen and I know how to cure them, and there's only one way to do it, and that's to work together. And you can yell and scream and go out there and do whatever you want, and it doesn't change anything. What does change something is public opinion. It's information. It's know-how. It's how to put something together which can get the votes even in a divided Congress, which I am committed to do and which I believe I can do. Uh, that ought to be worth something. Uh, you've spoken out on the floor and in other journals about Citizens United. I would like to ask you if um, you would commit to not taking special interest money from insurance companies and banks, et cetera, large lobbyists who are basically against the agenda that we're, I think, mostly here for in California. Yes, yes. Let me give you something even worse that's happened. For the first time, the Supreme Court of the United States has had dark money in it influencing certain states and thereby certain senatorial votes. Seven million dollars was spent to prevent um, President Obama's selection from moving forward. And with Gorsuch, 10 million dollars was spent of dark money. 
I've never seen this before. It's a brand new thing, and we are trying to find out where this money came from. If anybody has any ideas, we'd love to know. Next question to my left, please. She's answered that question. We're moving, we're moving on. If Senator Sanders sat down with you and showed you that single payer does not mean a complete takeover of government of all health care, that's a Republican talking point, will you support it? I would be happy to sit down with Senator Saunders and discuss it. Yes. Thank you. With Jeff Sessions, you said your people had to look at it. I'm not sure what points you're talking about, but we've seen other people say that there is a case for perjury. For me personally, recusal is not enough. That racist elf has got to go. He should be resigning, if not under criminal investigation for perjury under oath. So I'm asking again, why do we bring a knife to a gunfight? If they can do this shit to us, we need to turn around and go for that. Okay. Okay, I've answered that. Okay. Yeah. She's already answered well, that question. I've answered that question. I told you what I think. I still think it. And um, uh, you've got my answer. This concludes our town hall. I would invite everyone to stand up and give Senator Diane Feinstein a big round of applause. Senator, today you reiterated your support for President Trump's uh, missile strikes in Syria. Given the lessons of Iraq and Libya, what confidence should your constituents have that the United States can successfully effectuate regime change in the Middle East? I don't think we should have any confidence in regime change right now. I don't know a plan to secure regime change right now. I think. Um, the hope was that the negotiated agreement with Russia, uh, with um, Iran, and with the uh, Assad regime was going to yield uh, an armistice and then an election. Uh, whether that can be put back together again, I don't know because there isn't a diplomatic um, effort right now. But today you call for the ouster of Assad. Doesn't that constitute regime change? Pardon me? Doesn't the ouster of Assad constitute regime change? Because that's what you called for earlier today. Well, in my view, anybody that allows 500,000 of his own people to be killed by his own army uh, doesn't belong in office. So he's got to go. I have no problem saying that. So you do Thank favor you. regime change? Okay. We're done. Thank Please, you very much. I can handle myself. Okay. So you do favor regime change, Senator? Thank you. Senator, what is ousting Assad if not regime change, which you've, which you, you've called for? Regime... Uh, I don't want to get into semantics. I think you know what I was saying. Okay. Okay.